for joining me for another Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. My name is Dennis Brown, and today I am going to answer the question once and for all that everybody has been waiting for. I've been asked this question hundreds of times, and the question is, will Uber and Amazon Freight and other digital freight platforms eliminate the need for freight brokers? So that is the topic of today's discussion. Uh, I am so excited that you're here. Truly appreciate it. Here's the agenda. First, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. Love to hear from you. Love to hear where you're tuning in. Truly appreciate you joining me. Uh, for those of you that are catching this on replay, hit me up with hashtag replay. Love my replay, folks. Thank you for joining me. And here's the agenda. Again, we're going to do, uh, first, we'll do some shout outs, right? We'll try to do some shout outs for those of you that are joining me live. Second of all, we're going to dive into the answer to this question that has been burning through everybody's brain. Um, Third, we're going to jump in. Maybe we'll do a giveaway if we have time, you know, freight pin or t-shirt, someone who solves problems you don't know you have and ways you can't understand. Last but not least, we are going to do live Q&A. If you stick around to the end, I will answer questions live, whether it be about this topic or freight broker startup or freight broker sales or whatever it is that you that's ailing you or a question that's burning on your brain, okay? So that's the agenda for today. Thank you so much for being here. Truly appreciate it. I'm going to do some shout outs. Hit me up in the comments and let me know where you guys are at. And um, I have lots of notes. Okay. Lots of notes for today. So we got a lot to go over. Um, that was the agenda. So what do we got here? Let's see what we got live. All right. So looks like all the platforms are live. Hopefully you guys, can you guys hear me? Okay. Let me know if the sound quality is there because I had a couple of little chinks in the armor here. All right, cool. So let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I just want to double check and make sure the audio is working well. Um, obviously, it's always a forever testing and debugging process when you have to do streaming on the internet. So welcome Cynthia Moore from Maryland. As usual, Cynthia is always here. Uh, Simon from Savannah, Georgia, welcome. Joe from Portland, Oregon. Isabella from Bronx, New York. Corey from Billings, Montana, another faithful and loyal listener who's here virtually every day. Thank you, Corey. Isabella can hear me. Thank you so much. Zoran from Macedonia. There we go. So now we're already in another country. Thank you for joining me. Joe Almighty from Florida, as always. Who else do we got today? We might have a small audience. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. A lot of people will obviously catch us on replay. Um, Richard from New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you for joining. We have T-Square from Texas, and we've got most everybody's joining for some reason from YouTube. I'm not seeing anybody on LinkedIn. I wonder if there's a problem with the LinkedIn uh, with the LinkedIn streaming. But either way, uh, welcome Courtney from Pennsylvania. All right, so we got a lot of great um, stuff to go over today. Okay. And again, the agenda is this, we're going to do the live topic. We're going to do the live training about will digital freight brokers, will digital freight platforms like Uber and Amazon eliminate the need for freight brokers, okay? Um, then we're going to do possibly a giveaway depending upon our time. And then third, last but not least, we're going to do live Q&A. So if you stick around to the end, you will get access to live Q&A, okay? I will stay on here. I'll answer your questions I'll do my best to get as many questions as I can in the time allotted. Kevin Perry's listening on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Cassandra um, is in Chicago listening. She said the sound is good. Thank you, everybody. All right, great. So we've got a bunch of people live. So let me just review my notes really quick. Grab a quick drink. As you can see, I got a lot of notes here to go over because uh, this is a very important question. I've been asked this question literally hundreds of times in the last couple of years in particular. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you my two cents. Some of it you may like, some of it you may not. You got to stay tuned. Okay. All right. So let me grab a quick drink as we get some more people live. And then we'll get the show on the road. All right. So the question I'm going to answer today is, will Uber and Amazon freight platforms eliminate the need for freight brokers? That's the question I've been asked hundreds and hundreds of times. And as you can see here, I got a lot to go over. So I want you to stick tight 
But if you hang around to the end, I'm going to share with you something very, very important that can could significantly help your business as it relates to this. Okay. So, um, the fact is a digital freight broker, just so we can define it here is a freight platform that directly connects shippers and truck drivers. Okay. So at the most basic level, what those platforms are portraying and the positioning that they're taking is they're trying to eliminate freight brokers. So that's the reason why I've gotten so many questions. And that's the reason why we're here today. Okay. So I wanted, I want you to be clear about that up front on what a digital freight broker or digital freight platform is. Okay. All right. So the question is, will they eliminate the need for freight brokers? All right. Before I give you my answer, I'm going to tell you a quick story because I think it's very, very relevant and you need to understand this. All right. Back in 1992, all right, dial back. Some of you were probably not even born then, but many of you probably were. Back in 1992, online stock trading happened for the first time with a company called E-Trade, okay? So E-Trade started online stocks. So you could buy and sell stocks on the stock exchange digitally through E-Trade. And I remember very vividly that, you know, everybody was running around, all the financial advisors, all the stock bro brokers, all the financial analysts, they were all running around and the sky was falling because E-Trade was going to eliminate uh, stock brokers, all right? I remember it very vividly. There was tons of articles and tons of PR and tons of noise and tons of information out there about this, okay? Now, you remember, 1992 is very early in the internet days, right? So ultimately, what I want you to understand is this, after all that was said and done, you know, the big question was, why would anybody use a stockbroker when they have an online training platform? Well, the fact is, most, my most recent stat that I could find today is that there are still over 612,000 registered brokers and security reps in the United States alone as of today. So the fact is E-Trade did not eliminate stock brokers. And that is one of the primary reasons and the parallels that I want to use for why companies like Amazon and Uber and other digital freight platforms will not eliminate freight brokers. So my answer to that question is no, they will not eliminate the need for freight brokers. All right. So I do want to lean in here because you have to pay attention because the devil's in the details. All right. So yes, freight management and overall freight volume will become more digital. Okay. And as a broker, you will have to adapt and evolve in order to thrive in the digital economy. All right. And in, in this industry moving forward over the next 10 to 20 years, you will have to evolve. Meaning when I first started my freight brokerage back in 03, you know, a lot of brokers were still operating off of Excel spreadsheets, right? That was high tech for them. So yes, those brokers will probably disappear, okay? So I'm going to tell you another quick story here. I want to tell you a quick story, and that's this. I don't know if you remember the company called Blockbuster Video, okay? Blockbuster Video was a company that rented videos offline. So you would go to a store and you would rent an actual physical VHS tape and you would bring it home. You'd put it in your VCR, you'd play it, you'd bring it back. Usually you'd forget to rewind it. They would charge you. And Blockbuster started as a one-man operation and eventually grew to over 9,000 stores in the United States. Okay. So it was amazing. It was a huge success story. All right. So Blockbuster video grew to over 9,000 stores and then Netflix and one of their other big competitors, Redbox, right, emerged onto the scene, okay? And Blockbuster, but unfortunately, Blockbuster didn't believe and see the future, and they kept, they put their head in the sand and ignored those competitors, and they didn't make adjustments. They did not adapt. And eventually, in 2010, Blockbuster went from being a multi-billion dollar company who dominated the industry, who was the biggest and baddest guy on the block to going bankrupt and going out of business. Okay. So ultimately what I want you to understand here is what I said early on. 
if you are going to thrive, if you are going to survive in the new age, you are going to have to adapt. You're going to have to evolve. That's the important thing that I want you to take from this. Okay. So um, I'm going to give you three tips right now. Lean in very carefully. I'm going to give you three tips on how to thrive as a freight broker in the digital age. All right. So here we go. Number one, I've already said it. You have to learn to evolve and leverage technology to enhance your offering, lower your operational cost, and make you more efficient and competitive. Understand that. You have to leverage technology in order to help enable those pieces, right? No more operating off legal pads and Excel spreadsheets, right? The technology is out there. It has evolved. There are tons of TMSs out there, tons of transportation management software out there that you can use. Some are were just born in the last year and are still evolving. And others have tried and true and been around for a long time. You guys all know, I highly recommend Tim Hyam, a CEO at Ascend TMS. And if you guys wanted to check that out, uh, I'll put a link on the screen really quick here. Let me see. It is freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash TMS. You can get signed up for free with no credit card. Okay. So you guys can check that out. I've highly recommended them for many years. I know Tim Hyam personally, he's the CEO. They're very, they're very savvy technologically and they're very forward thinking. Okay. So that's number one, you're going to have to evolve and let technology play a bigger role in your business. All right. Number two, you've heard me say this before, and you're going to hear me say it hundreds of more times, focus on relationships over transactions. This is a huge advantage that traditional freight brokers have over digital freight platforms because there is no relationship, right? It's very arm's length. It's very digital, which is very, uh, you know, very bland and doesn't allow you to have that rapport and relationship and trust that you can have by building those personal relationships, not only with your shippers, but your carriers. Digital freight brokers are more transactional. Traditional freight brokers are focused on relationships and trust, okay? That's number two. And number three, lean in really quick because this is something that I think can really help you as you grow your business, right? So as you are evolving as a freight broker, what I want you to look for is opportunities that require a level of complexity. What do I mean by that? Well, a one pick, one drop van load is probably one of the least complex loads out there, right? It's a lot of van capacity. It's one pick, it's one drop. It's the least likely to have an issue, okay? Like palletized van load, right? Dock to dock, right? Very simple stuff. But if you were able to find freight that has a level of complexity to it, for example, heavy haul or refrigerated or some specialized stuff, right? So I want to tell you a quick story about an agent that used to work for me when I had my brokerage. I'll tell you a quick story. I remember when we first brought him on, I had a conversation with him. We were talking about his niche and he explained it to me. And his niche was this. It was very neat. Um, what he did, his one of his couple of his big customers were companies that purchased outdated computers from banks. So for example, a bank has thousands of employees and maybe 10 or 20 or 50 different locations across the United States. And every two or three years, they need to replace their computers internally. Okay. So what he did was he actually would provide like a white glove service where they would actually manage the entire project of removing those computers from those facilities and then delivering them to the warehouses or to the other facilities where the buyer, his customer, was actually going to refurbish those machines. So they would actually go into the buildings, pick up the computers, package them up, put them on a put them on a truck that they brokered, it wasn't a truck that they owned, it was a truck that they brokered, and then deliver it to the other facility where they were going to be refurbished. Now, I remember when he first told me his typical margins on a, on a process like this were 30 or 40%. Now, understand that this is not straight brokerage. There was some other white glove service associated with it. So I don't want you to get the misconception that all brokered loads are 
getting 30 or 40% because that's not the case. This had a white glove type service built into it. It had an extra level of complexity built into it. And so ultimately, what I want you to understand from that example, and he would bid on these entire projects. It wasn't individual loads. So they would say, hey, we've got you know, 400 or 500 or 1,000 computers we need to pick up at this facility. Um, what's, your, what's your overall project price? And then that would include everything from A to Z, okay? So what I want you to understand from this example is complexity creates opportunities, right? The more complex you, more complexity you can find within your shippers, the bigger challenges you can find within your shippers, within the supply chain, the more opportunity you have, the more demand you will have, and the longer life cycle you would have, okay? So those are the three tips. That's my, that's my take on it. Again, I do not believe that these digital freight pl fr platforms, <laughs> digital freight platforms are going to eliminate the need for freight brokers. I mean, the fact is we've seen numerous, even in the recent past, go bankrupt because they have yet to prove their business model or sustainability. For example, Convoy filed bankruptcy. Surge filed bankruptcy. Some smaller ones have filed bankruptcy. There's been other ones in the past that have failed. So I'm not saying that these digital freight platforms are all going to go away, but I can almost guarantee you my personal opinion is that they not are not going to eliminate the need for freight brokers. So I hope you enjoyed that. Take those three tips I shared with you and take them to the bank because I can guarantee you that that will help future proof your business. And listen, if you like this, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, no matter where you're at. If you're following me on LinkedIn, follow me there. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Truly appreciate you guys being here. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you're looking for some help, right? You're looking for some assistance. You're looking for a guide, step A to Z. Check out FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. We've been well known to become, we are the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker and freight agent training platform, trained over 10,000 students, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. So check that out, again, at FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. All right, cool. So for those of you that are going to stick around, awesome. So question, question, question to you guys, all right? So I answered this question for you, but I want to hear your take. I want to hear your take in the comments. Will digital freight brokers eliminate the need for freight brokers and freight agents? What's your take? And if you enjoyed this, give me a rating in the comments, one to 10. One, Dennis, this is a waste of my time. 10, listen, I loved it. I agree. Here's why. And here's my favorite point. Hit me up in the comments and let me know. Um, let me see what time we got. Okay, we may, we may have time for a giveaway. Um, so what do you guys got? Hit me up in the comments. Let me know. All right, so we are going to, we are going to, we're going to do a free giveaway. All right, we're going to do a free giveaway. We're going to give away a Freightpreneur t-shirt. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand, okay? So I am going to give you, I am going to do a giveaway. I'm looking for some comments. Hold on for one minute. I want to get some feedback on today's training because, again, I, I want to make sure I'm delivering for you, okay? Um, but then we are going to do a quick T-shirt giveaway, and then we will move into Q&A. But hold your questions till the end, okay? Do me a favor. Hold your questions. All right, so we got some good feedback. Ten. 10, 10. All right, good. Awesome. Good feedback. Relationships is the key. Yep, I agree. Dave, welcome from Colorado. Awesome. All right, hold your questions till the end, till q and I'm going to do a quick giveaway right now of a Freightpreneur t-shirt. This thing's getting a little discolored here. The black is a little faded. I got probably should get a new one. I got about 20 of these in my closet. Anyway, um, we'll do a Freightpreneur t-shirt giveaway. All right, awesome. So here's all you got to do for a chance to win um, a Freightpreneur t-shirt. Here's all you got to do. Wherever you are listening, whether that be on LinkedIn, 
Facebook, or YouTube. Here's all you got to do. I want you to hit the share button. I want you to like the video first. First is what you got to do. If you want a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt, like the video and then hit the share button and then share it on whatever platform. If you're on Facebook, share it on Facebook. If you're on LinkedIn, share it on LinkedIn. If you're on YouTube, you can share it obviously that way as well. Um, so you can share it to Facebook, you can share it to different platforms, or if you're on YouTube, you can click share and you can actually text it to three of your friends. Any of those will qualify you. And then let me know, come back into the comments and let me know. I liked and shared this video, right? I liked and shared this video, those words liked and shared the video, liked and shared the video, come back in and let me know if you did both of those things. I will enter you in the contest for the Freightpreneur t-shirt giveaway. We'll ship it out to you. You'll get it within a couple of weeks. So yes, do that now. Hit me up in the comments and let me know that you did it. If you want a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. And then after the giveaway, stick around. If you have questions, we're going to do live Q and A. Okay. Hold your questions till the end because I will not get to them. Richard, got to say liked and shared. Okay. I'm a stickler about that because I'm going to randomly go down through here and pick one person with my eyes closed. And if it doesn't say liked and shared, I can't pick you. Okay. So let me make sure. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. So Cynthia is in, uh, Richard is in. All right. Who else wants a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt? All you got to do is like the video wherever you're at, and then click the share button and share the stream. That simple. So we're going to wait for a few more people to like and share, then we'll do the giveaway, and then we will jump into live Q&A. Mm. Simon liked and shared on WhatsApp. Nice. Perfect. A lot of you are on YouTube, so yeah, I get it. Sometimes um, it's a little harder on YouTube to share, but yeah, just click the share button. It should give you a bunch of options where you can share it. Um, and if you want, you could do like a WhatsApp. You can do, you can actually just click it and SMS it. You can text it to three friends. Either way, um, let me know. All right, cool. Kevin Perry liked and shared. All right, awesome. So you got one more minute. To, uh, for a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. And then we're going to jump into Q&A, but hold your questions. I'll let you know when to hit me up with your questions and I will do my absolute best to try to answer any and all questions you have. Okay, now your questions, when we take start taking questions, can be involved with anything. Freight broker startup, freight broker sales, marketing. Um, it could be about this whole digital freight platform thing, about Uber and Amazon. Oh, uh, you know what? I blew it. I should have told you this. I forgot this part of it. Oh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to share this with you guys really quick. I forgot this part. Okay. So while we're waiting, okay, I want to share with you something that happened. I forgot to include this, right? Something that happens because I wasn't following my notes. Recently, someone contacted me from one of these broker list freight platforms. Okay. And they wanted to have a conversation with me about me promoting their platform. Well, I immediately went to their website and I saw that they were positioned as again, one of these freight platforms that were trying to eliminate freight brokers. They had raised a whole bunch of money. They were very well known. And I called him out on it. And I said, listen, my audience is freight brokers and freight agents. How can I help you when you're trying to eliminate who these people are? And they said, listen, we're pivoting our business model because based on customer feedback from shippers direct, they want freight brokers included. They want freight brokers involved. And so what they said was, we now realize the importance and the value of freight brokers in the ecosystem. So that's coming directly from one of the freight platforms itself. So if that's not additional proof and additional support, then I don't know what is. But that's 100% true. I had a phone, I had multiple messages back and forth on LinkedIn and through email, as well as a phone call with the CEO of the company, or I think it was the president or CEO, right? Now, they were great guys, but the point is I wanted to share that with you because I want you to understand that I truly believe not just based on, you know, not just based on some random 
facts you find online. In my own personal experience, in my own personal research, that freight brokers are here to stay as long as you evolve, as long as you follow those three tips. Okay. All right. Okay. So we got a bunch of people. Let's do the giveaway. I'm going to randomly close my eyes very scientifically and I'm going to find one person. And the person is Simon Jamel. Simon Jamel, you are the winner of the Freightpreneur t-shirt. Liked and shared on WhatsApp. Congratulations. Thank you for playing along. Here's all you got to do to collect your shirt so we can ship it off to you. What I want you to do is either on LinkedIn, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, go to LinkedIn, find me, connect, and send me your full name, address, and what size shirt. And let me know that you won the YouTube, uh, sub the YouTube freight, the YouTube t-shirt giveaway. Just say that YouTube t-shirt giveaway. Okay. Let me know that you did that. Give me your name, your address and your size. It's unisex sizing. This is a large, small, medium, large, extra large, whatever. And I'll ship it off to you. If you can't find me on LinkedIn, you can go to freight broker bootcamp, um, page on Facebook and you can like the page and then you message me the same information and then I will shoot you off your shirt. Congratulations for winning. Congratulations for all that played along. Thank you guys. Truly appreciate it. Um, so Simon is the big winner of the Freypreneur t-shirt. Follow those instructions and I will get that shirt off to you. You'll get it within a couple of weeks. Absolute zero cost to you. Now, I should have mentioned this before. I totally apologize. You have to be in the US, US only. Okay. I don't ship these things. I'm not going to ship it to Armenia. I'm not going to ship it to Brazil. I'm not going to ship it to Australia. I mean, it's a $20 shirt, right? It would cost me more in shipping than just the shirt. So it doesn't make sense to me. I just can't get myself to do it. So, um, all right, cool. Simon, you won. Now let's jump into the live Q and a. So if you have questions about today's training, if you have questions about freight broker startup, freight broker sales, a previous video or something that's just burning in your head or something you're running into your business, into your business today, hit me up and I will do my absolute best to try to answer those questions. Congratulations once again to Simon and thank you all everybody for playing along. So what do we got people? Uh, okay. Question. What is the best way to start working with a factoring company after you've started your business? Well, the obvious way is to reach out to companies that do freight broker factoring, start vetting them, start developing relationships with them, and then pick the one that's the best choice for you. Now, there are some limitations when you are a brand new freight broker because not every factoring company wants to work with startup brokers, but there are startups out, there are freight broker or factoring companies that will work with startups. As a matter of fact, I can't announce it right now, but I have a big announcement coming next week, okay, um, in a partnership relationship that I've developed with a factoring company that is going to help my students, right, um, not only help build their credit as a new broker, but also factor their invoices uh, and help them with cash flow, okay? So that's going to be coming very soon. Stay tuned. Matter of fact, I have that slated for next Monday live. If you stick around, you'll get all the details. I apologize. I can't, I can't mention it right now because we haven't fully announced it yet, but that will be happening next week. I know I've had a lot of questions from you guys about, about the fact that denim doesn't really want freight broker startups anymore. Uh, and there's, there's less company, less factoring companies out there that want to deal with startups, but I have developed a relationship and stick around to next week. Cause we are going to have a big announcement about that. Okay. Good question. Thank you. We'll tee it back up on Monday. All right. Question from Kairos. Hey, Dennis, how do I deal with trucking companies that don't communicate well? I had a company hold containers for extra days to charge extra fees. How do I handle a situation like this? Okay. Well, I don't know all of the details of what you're saying, but typically the devil's in the details, right? So Either they misunderstood, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They may have misunderstood what your requests were. That's a potential, right? That may have happened. Um, and so you need to be very specific on what you're requiring from each carrier that you do business with, right? The picks, the drops, the exact locations, the timing, the appointments, um, the type of equipment, the devil's in the details, right? 
Um, now, if that's not the case, right, where it was a miscommunication of some sort, then in this case, this kind of comes down to, you know, vetting the carriers properly and then obviously holding them accountable. Now, I don't know the exact situations, but it sounds to me like um, I had a company hold containers for extra days to charge extra fees. How do I handle this? Well, if those fees weren't agreed upon up front, if those terms weren't agreed upon up front and understanding what those fees would be, then obviously it's probably something that's disputable or at least negotiable. So without me knowing all the exact details, um, the reality is you got to, number one concern is you got to get your shipper's freight delivered. Okay. That's got to get delivered. So if you got to bite the bullet on that, you got to bite the bullet on it. That your responsibility is to the shipper first. So you got to get that. You cannot cost them or harm the shipper. Um, and so secondly um, is, and if, if you end up, do end up resolving this uh, and it's not a positive resolve where you're, you're happy with the resolution, then obviously you're going to want to blacklist that carrier so that you don't hold them anymore. You're going to put them on a do not load list so that you don't use them anymore. I mean, that's just the reality. You're not looking for additional problems inside your business. So beyond that, I'm not quite sure without having all the full and de full and complete details exactly how I can help you, but maybe that gives you a little bit of a guideline or a little bit of a framework to work from. Okay, Richard asks, what's the best way to create an overview that can get the attention of a shipper? Well, Richard, I don't know what an overview is. What do you mean by an overview? Are you talking about a cold call sales pitch? Are you talking about a... a website? Are you talking about a PowerPoint presentation? I'm not quite sure what you're looking for. So be more specific and maybe I can help. Okay. Are you supposed to update, renew your surety bond if you've added your DBA with FMCSA? And what if you don't update your surety bond? Okay. So what you're saying is you got your broker authority under ABC logistics, let's say, and um, you have now changed your company name by adding a DBA. So you're doing business as a different name. Um, and so your question is, do you need to update the FMCSA? And what if you don't update your surety bond? Yeah, you're going to want to update both. You're going to want to reach out to the FMCSA and do an update because if you have a name change, if you are now using a different name, you were ABC Logistics and now you're XYZ Logistics, that's what you're going by, you need to update that with the FMCSA. You're going to have to do an update. Also with your broker bond, you're definitely going to want to also do an update. Okay, so you're going to have to reach out to them and find out what that process is. So yeah, a name change should not be a big deal. Okay. Shouldn't be a big deal for you. Uh, Simon says, I can so easily be a 20 truck, 30 trailer asset based broker. I just need some direction on how to take the next step. Well, Simon, um, you know, I have, uh, if you go to my blog, freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash blog, right? I think it's on here somewhere. If you go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash blog, and then you type in this and you search in my blog content for seven steps, there's an entire blog post that will outline and highlight the seven steps you need in order to become a successful freight broker, okay? So if you do that, you can, you can see the entire post, right? You can see all the instructions. And one of the most important components of that is getting trained right? On the process of brokering, getting set up as a broker, setting up your office and the process of brokering loads from A to Z. So that's what I call Freight Broker Bootcamp. Had that training since 2009, trained over 10,000 students. Now, if you're looking to vet me personally, because I don't recognize you as someone who's always in this feed, um, you know, I've, I've done over $200 million as a freight broker. And again, I've trained over 10,000 students. Many of my students have went on to build six and seven figure freight brokerage. Some of them even built eight figure freight brokerages. Again, that's not a promise or a projection. I can't guarantee your results, but what I can guarantee you is it's worked for others and it could work for you, right? Okay. 
what's next here? Okay, so question is, should you use a factoring company or should you try to fund load yourself? Would 30K be enough to start? Well, in a perfect world, you fund your own loads and you fund your own cash flow, right? Because it's the least cost way to do it. So if you have $30,000 set aside for operating capital, yeah, you can absolutely get started on that. There's no question. I mean, the reality is, let's do the math, right? You're going to need to pay your carriers somewhere in between one and 30 days. If they look for a quick pay, you got to pay them quickly. If they look for, um, you know, if standard pay of 30 days, you pay them in 30 days. Okay. Most of those carriers are going to be using factoring companies. And so the reality is they're not going to want a quick pay. So um, the, so yeah, you um, should fund it yourself if you can, because it's less cost, which means you'll put more profit in your pocket. Because the cost for you um, is nothing because you got that, all it is is the potential interest on that money, but it's not the cost of factoring, okay? It's way less cost. So yes, you should try to fund it yourself if you can. Um, so let's do the math. If you got $30,000 and the, and the an average load is say a thousand bucks, you have the cash flow already to finance 30 loads. So you could turn over 30 loads a month before you even need factoring. So absolutely, I did not use factoring, okay? We used our own cash, we used our own financing, we bootstrapped it, and we were able to do that. So yeah, not every freight broker is gonna require factoring, especially if you're a freight broker startup, because ultimately, you're not in a situation where you're gonna have to you know, come out of pocket for hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? I mean, by the time I sold my brokerage, I think we were doing six or seven million dollars a month, right? Now, if I would have had to come out of my own pocket for that, that would have been tough, but we used bank financing because we had already been financed by a bank. We never did use factoring, but it is a great tool, especially for startup brokers or brokers that are going through a high growth curve. So hope that helps. Isabella says, I need help getting leads and then getting them to give me a lane. <laughs> I'm a new broker just for my authority a month ago and still no sales. Okay. So Isabella, so what you're telling me is you don't need leads. You need customers, right? So the reality is, is customers are the lifeblood of any business, right? So, you know, that involves sales. It's not like a McDonald's where you set up a McDonald's on the corner of Maine and on main street in your local town and people drive by and they're going to pull in there and they're going to buy stuff. That's not how it works. Okay. So in freight brokerage, you're going to have to do outreach. You're going to have to network. You're going to have to find shippers. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get their attention. It's, it's the sales process. Some people use cold calling. Some people use cold email. Some people use LinkedIn. Some people use face to face and smart brokers use all of those in a multi-touch point outreach strategy that allows them to get their prospects attention by differentiating themselves with a compelling sales hook and then asking good questions to identify the need and to position themselves as a as someone who has can provide value and then filling in the gaps right and providing competitive pricing with solid service okay so you know i can't teach you on this live how to get customers. It's way too complex and it would take way too long. But here's what I can tell you. If you go to my blog, just like I had mentioned before. Okay. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me see. Where is it? Where's the blog URL? You dummy. Oh, there it is. Okay. Go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash blog. And if you type in the search box for my blog, sales, you'll see a, a post there, the ultimate freight broker sales guide, okay? Which is gonna walk you through the process of how to get shippers. This is a sales guide. Now, this is not a full sales training. It's not like my freight broker sales accelerator, which is my coaching program that's specifically geared towards freight broker sales, where I teach you and coach you on my 
best freight broker sales strategies, tactics, tools in my entire system. This is not that. That's sold out. It's not available right now. Okay. I will be opening it up in the future. If you guys want to get on the wait list for that, for the um, Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, again, which is that live coaching program where I work with you um, and teach you my exact system and how to implement it within your business, you guys can go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. Okay. It'll open up probably sometime in the next, I don't know, the next 45 to 60 days, maybe a little bit further out, depending upon my schedule. But yeah, you can get on the wait list. You'll be the first to be notified. That is not a free program. It is not a cheap program. Some people even believe it's expensive. But if you get on the wait list, you'll be the first to get notified. So you get all the details and you'll be able to enroll because that sells out virtually every time. Okay. Okay. Hope that helps. Mm, let's see. Okay. Question from Simon. I've been an owner operator 38 years with my own authority and have been trucks and have had trucks run for me. Okay. Gotcha. So you're just talking to answering someone else's questions. Cairo said it took him four months to land his first customer. It can take times. Matter of fact, I had a, um, I think it was Ajmal Baraksai, which was a student of Freight Burger Bootcamp and a student of my Freight Burger Sales Accelerator. Uh, was a guy who was from the military who decided to start his own freight brokerage. And it took him, he ended up, I think he ended up doing, I think he ended up doing like, I don't know, maybe a million dollars in sales in his first 10 months, but it took him three full months to get his first shipper. Okay. You can go on my YouTube playlist and you can see um, uh, student success stories. Ajmal Baraksai, a uh, great guy, did a great job. Uh, is, and his business is still growing. I just had a chat with him not long ago. Okay, so any other questions? I know there's a lot of banter back and forth in the in the chat box, which is fine. If you want to get on the wait list for the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, that is my uh, Freight Broker Sales Coaching Program. I take that piece of my brain. I implanted into your head. I teach you all my best freight broker sales strategies, tactics, tools, and my entire system, right? That is a coaching program um, where you're able to actually pick my brain. I can help you implement that into your business. Um, but in order to qualify for that, you got to get on the wait list because it sells out every time. Again, it's not a free program. It's not a cheap program. Okay. Matter of fact, some, again, some people consider it to be expensive, but expensive is relative. Sorry, guys, I lost you there. It was a tech issue. I apologize. Uh, hopefully, we're still live. I lost you briefly. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if there's any other questions, and then I'm going to wrap it up for today. Okay, question from Craig. Does anyone do LTL? Normally, higher margin, but lower overall cost. Okay. So, yeah, freight brokers. There are freight brokers that specialize in LTL freight. Now, just so you guys know, there's LTL, there's... PTL, which LTL, which is less than truckload, PTL, which is partial truckload, and full truckload, which is FTL. We're focusing on LTL. LTL is the smallest element, right? It's the smallest mode typically other than parcels, right? We're not delivering Amazon packages, but it's pallets of goods, right? So if you've got one, three, four, five, maybe up to, you know, eight or 10, you know, three, five, somewhere in there, pallets, as well as maybe under 5,000 pounds, then a lot of times that's going to go as LTL, right? So that'll go on a common carrier for LTL. Uh, it's going to be driven by class, you know, the class of the freight, the dimensions, the weight, all of that, right? And so, yeah, you can specialize in LTL, um, whereas a full truckload might average 15 bucks, an LTL might average three or 400 bucks, right? So it's a much smaller transaction, 
but yes, you can make higher percentages of margins. So you might make 30%, 20% on a $300 load, but 20% or 30% of an L of 300 is only, you know, 60 to 90 bucks versus the same amount of time it could take you to move a full truck load where you're going to make somewhere between maybe 100 and 250 bucks per load, right? So I always recommend that startup brokers focus on full truck load, find a niche inside of the full truck load um, or maybe partials, but LTL requires, you know, rate bases and different technology in order for it to make sense. The companies that do well in LTL are companies like L the brokers that do well are companies like Echo and, and Global Trans. Global Trans has an agent program. They are very, very good at LTL. They've got really good rates that they've negotiated with all the big LTL carriers. They've got a self-serve model where your clients can come in and get their rates and tender their freight and do all that through their technology. And it, it, it saves a lot of time and energy for, for brokers and for agents. So yeah, you can broker LTL. Absolutely. Um, again, there's ups and downs to it, but yeah, it's definitely a niche that you can broker. Again, it's going to be even more rate sensitive than full truckload in my opinion. Okay. So yeah. All right, cool. Listen, guys, thank you so much for being here. Truly appreciate it. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker or freight agent, you haven't gotten started yet, you need some hand-holding, you're sick and tired of bouncing from YouTube to TikTok to Facebook to, you know, to everywhere else trying to find the information on how to become a successful freight broker, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. You can check that out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Set a reminder on your phone next week, Monday, we have a big announcement. We're going to have a live training. Um, as I shared with you before, you want to make next week at noon, Monday at noon, we're going to have a big announcement, big training um, of a new partnership with a factoring company that could definitely help your business. And um, we will see you next week, next Monday on the next Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. Thank you for being here. Have an awesome day and we'll see you next week.